welcome back. So I thought we'd take a break from the Disney's Abandoned series and discuss the upcoming Disney Plus series that will bring the Disney parks and turn them into a TV universe. The first series will seem to be based around the SEA, or Society of Explorers and Adventurers. So I thought today we'd discuss the SEA, who they are, and some of their illustrious and interesting members. So come along, let's learn and have some fun together as we discuss the SEA. First founded on August 12, 1538, in Italy at Porto Paradiso, the SEA for short, consists of scientists, researchers, explorers, travelers, artists, and obviously adventurers. The club's main focus is to continue dedicated explorations of the Earth's many exotic lands and oceans. The SEA is based around the four guiding concepts as represented by their crests. Adventure is represented by the galleon in the top right corner. With its sturdy sides and large sails, this ship is ready for what may come its way. Romance is represented in the opposite upper corner by an armillary sphere. An armillary sphere, if you didn't know, is a model of a celestial globe made of rings and hoops representing the equator, the tropics, and other celestial circles that rotate on an axis. Discovery is represented by a compass, the guiding tool used to find nearly every treasure, and, last but not least, are an artist's tools. A paintbrush, a gouge, and a chisel represent innovation and man's thirst for knowledge and power to make art. According to a mission statement found at the Oceaneer Lab and Mystic Manor in Tokyo Disney Sea, quote, the mission of the Society of Explorers and Adventurers is to collect, conserve, and curate valuable cultural and artistic artifacts from around the world and make them available to the public in an artistically pleasing and sensitive manner. It is furthermore the mission of the organization to equip and mount socio-cultural expeditions to discover, explore, chronicle, and protect the artistic achievements of human society, past and present, exalted and forgotten." Unquote. Now that we know a little about what the SEA is, let's discuss some of the more interesting and prominent members and why they are important. We will start with Lord Henry Mystic and Albert. Lord Henry's Monkey Lord Henry Mystic is a key figure in the SEA, and despite being an adventurer and collector of rare antiquities, he is also the owner of Tokyo Disney Sea's Mystic Manor, which is Tokyo's version of the Haunted Mansion. But instead of a home full of the dead, it is the home to Lord Henry Mystic, and his vast collections of interesting artifacts and other things he's found along his ways in many travels. Another of the club's more infamous and seedy characters is Harrison Hightower III. This gruff and often not so ethical member of the SCA should look oddly familiar to Disney Park fans who know their history and Imagineers. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out my past video, which will pop up for you now. Anyways, he is the owner of Tokyo Disney Sea's Hotel Hightower, their version of the Tower of Terror. Harrison is known for having collected treasures and antiques throughout all the world, but he did so under false pretenses and shady circumstances. Until one day, when he sailed his own fate by stealing an idol called the Shuriki Utundu, which means, believe the misfortune. For those of you, like myself, who haven't been to Tokyo, the Shuriki Utundu is the main villain in Tokyo Tower of Terror, and is believed to be responsible for the disappearance and or death of Harrison Hightower III. Another interesting side note on Harrison is that he is believed to be somehow related to George Hightower, Constance Hatchaway's fifth husband. Constance Hatchaway, if you did not know, is the bride found on the haunted mansion in the attic. The third member we'll be discussing is Albert Falls, or Dr. Albert Falls Sr., if you will. He is known for being a scientist, a theologian, and a legendary explorer. He was especially gifted when it came to navigating the world's most remote waters, with a large sense of humor. Among his discoveries were the Shirley Temple, a previously lost and sunken Cambodian temple 
found on June 5th, 1888. And perhaps his most known discovery, Schweitzer Falls and the Backside of Water, as featured in the Jungle Cruise on August 12th, 1891. In 1911, he founded the Jungle Navigation Company. This was a shipping company designed to help flow goods and cargo through the jungle rivers and throughout the world. Also, in return, it would support his fellow adventurers on their expeditions. The company's headquarters would also serve as a home for Falls, and would be where he would entertain other SEA members over the years. During those secret SEA meetings, in a hidden room under the library, he would prove he was a virtuoso pipe organist who helped pioneer music of the time. But Albert also had a family, and his wife Victoria would eventually give birth to a son named Albert Jr. Albert Jr. would have a daughter named Alberta, who would go on to live with Albert Falls Sr. at the age of eight due to her drive for adventure and knowledge. Albert and his other skippers eventually became a second family to her, and after Albert Falls Sr.'s passing, Alberta would take over the Jungle Navigation Company and begin cruises in 1931. The fourth and definitely not last nor least in the list we will be discussing is Mary Oceaneer. She was an avid sea captain who sailed during the 19th century. She was a well-known treasure hunter and is believed to have knowledge on the lost nation of Atlantis. Mary was a member at the same time of Lord Henry Mystic and Harrison Hightower III, and did attend that 1899 SEA meeting, which would shortly happen before the disappearance and likely demise of Harrison Hightower III at the hands of the Shuriki Utundu. Mary's large discovery was the Florida Lagoon of Plastid Palms, where she was met by a hurricane that beached her, and according to early scripts for both Typhoon Lagoon and the Adventurers Club, have it both set in the 50s, which would have had Mary on that adventure in well into her 70s. Now that you've met some of the more notable and interesting members, let's discuss the last president of the club, Jason Chandler. He was originally designed for the abandoned Discovery Bay, which was a project to be done at Disneyland, but would eventually be incorporated into the SCA, and then more notably and largely into Big Thunder Mountain. Chandler was a 19th century inventor who, by 1880s, began selling his tech to the Big Thunder Mining Company, which was run by yet another SEA member, Barnabas T. Bullion, who is obviously the man in charge of the Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, and is known to care more about gold output rather than miner safety. As you can see, the Society of Explorers and Adventurers is filled with lots of interesting and sometimes unsavory characters. However, we've only discussed a small handful of this club's storied past. I am personally looking forward to the upcoming Disney Parks TV universe and hope they take the time, care, and effort into piecing together the lore and history of the different parks and their attractions. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed it. I really do appreciate it. And if you're not a subscriber, I would absolutely love to have you as a subscriber. We just crossed over 100 subscribers and we're continuing to grow. So thanks for joining the Knowledgeable Nick family and continue to grow and learn with us. So please join us and let me know what you'd like to see in the future. Thanks again.